Hey everybody, and welcome back for the Art Camp 3 Week 9 critique. Uh, so this will be our last critique of your sketches, uh, prepping for these last few weeks of finishing up some paintings. So as I said before, I'm going to give you two weeks each. Um, so you're going to finish three paintings, and you've got two weeks each. So the actual next critique will be two weeks from now. Um, so hopefully, uh, between this week and the past few weeks, you've come up with at least a few sketches uh, that you would like to finish. Uh, if you haven't, uh, this would be a good time to crunch and do a few extras so that you do have some stuff you really want to finish. Um, there's few worse feelings than finishing paintings that you don't think are very good and are not worth finishing. So try to make sure that whatever sketches you're working on uh, you actually do want to take to a finish. Um, so with this week, uh, we're going to get into emotion and narrative and storytelling and stuff like that, and trying to communicate something with our landscapes. Uh, so often when people do environments, uh, they're just thinking about boring old backgrounds. And there's nothing wrong with backgrounds when you've got other stuff to look at. Uh, but environments should, in theory, be able to stand on their own. Uh, they should stand on their own merits and be interesting images just on their own. Uh, those are the most successful landscapes, the most successful environments are those that tell a story on their own, tell a mood on their own, uh, without worrying about characters and stuff like that happening in them. Uh, so uh, that's going to be our focus for today, um, and also trying to prep you for getting some more sketches that you can finish up in the next few weeks. So uh, yeah, let's dive on in here. There we go. All right, so as usual, um, feel free to ask any questions you might have. Um, always more than happy to answer questions. I will do my best to make sure I'm looking at the chat and uh, be able to address any questions you might have. Uh, other than that, Gonna just do my do my paint over thing and uh, see what we can do here. Uh, so these are looking good. Um, yeah, these are all pretty solid. Um, my initial impression of these is that they're all fairly good, but I want to see them pushed a little bit further, and they sort of do something that I was talking about. Um, uh, last week, I believe it was, uh, on somebody's work, uh, in that it's sort of a one-note thing, in that you've got you've got a focal point, and it's clearly the focal point, and it's and it's well done in that sense, and you also have an overall color scheme, and that works well, but I want to see you take now the second note, um, that is to say, another focal point uh, for us to. For us to look at and maybe that means that hey maybe we can open up a little bit of this forest and give give the viewer something else to latch on to maybe there's something interesting going on over here uh, maybe even a little bit brighter than a lot of the other forest here uh, that will encourage us to look a little bit closer uh, maybe that means that you've even got a little bit of sky poking through here um, maybe we can um, tell a little bit of story over here. Uh, this is something that I'd like to get into more at some point, is talking about micro compositions and that, you know, it's important to think about like this little square and how the story will tell over here uh, and in relation to the whole piece. Um, I'd encourage you to start thinking about that. And then even as far as color goes, It'd be nice to see a little bit more um, complexity and variety there. Uh, and that could come in mixing up the, the colors you're using. Uh, for instance, you could introduce some, some purples in there. Uh, you could go with some blues in there. Uh, just something to get past the sort of one tone, two tone color palette that you've got started here and add a little bit more complexity to it. Um, it'll just make it a little bit more lively of a scene uh, than it would otherwise. 
Um, you know, maybe you've got some red flowers going on in here. Uh, it starts to to be a little bit more of a of a finished looking painting because it's it's more alive. It's less uh, manufactured feeling. Um, and the same could be done for all of these. Um, you could, you know, expand the sort of color palettes you use um, to uh, to encourage that. And especially for something like this, where you're kind of going for sort of a happy mood here, uh, you want to make sure that you're doing what you can with with colors to to make that happen. Just a, a couple thoughts there. Um, overall, these look really nice. Um, I just want to see them them push that that extra stage further. Uh, start to think about other focal points that you can have. Uh, start to think about other elements that are important. Because yeah, you've got this focal point, you've got that part nailed, but now you want the complexity so that as you take this to finish. Uh, there's more stuff to look at. You know, how can you make this tree interesting, for instance? Uh, how can you add to the storytelling with this? Um, what other stuff can you use in here uh, to make this overall just more interesting? Um, what sort of other colors can you add in here that won't detract from the overall uh, color palette you've got, but will actually add to it? You know, by adding in these reds here, uh, I've sort of pushed. Uh, the greens to look even more vibrant, even more happy, uh, stuff like that. You know, what happens if you start adding some light rays in here? Uh, what happens if you add uh, some other streams in here? Uh, kinda, what kind of other elements uh, can you play with uh, to make this even more interesting? Um, yeah, but overall looking looking quite nice. I like the uh, I like the variety of colors you've got going on in here. I think these are all working working quite well. Um, you've got a nice intensity to the colors, and uh, yeah, I think they're working pretty well. I think uh, my eyes sort of drawn to this one, and I think the only trouble is again value wise. You know, if you turn it to grayscale and zoom out, you kind of start to lose what's happening. Um, because you're doing the thing where you're focusing a bit too much on some of the local values. And I don't have a strong sense of lighting. Uh, so for instance, here, uh, there's no clear separation of light, shadow, and reflected light. Um, I can see that like you know, you've got some reflected light going on there, uh, but the reflected light is, is honestly brighter than the, the light on top of it, uh, which is kind of non-existent at this point. I'd like to see that kind of pushed, um, especially in kind of a bright, happy scene like this uh, with full overhead lighting. You're going to have a lot of lighting happening, and you're going to have a fair bit of difference between the light and the shadow. And your perspective, actually, of the foreground is, is pretty solid. And then it sort of goes away as you get back here. Uh, it's less obvious where things are going, and honestly, these little uh, these little patches of, I guess I guess it would be sand and dirt, uh, really can tell you a fair bit. And those little bits of overlap are actually going to communicate quite a lot of the perspective. Because keep in mind, if you've established a horizon line that's there, um, you're going to start to look up at a lot of these things, and so anytime you can show some of the roundness there of looking down or looking up. Uh, to start to think about you know, these as flat geometric shapes. And how am I going to show um, how these things are overlapping? Also, anytime you've got. Um, 
sky that blue, you're going to have a perfect opportunity to have some really, really vibrant um, blue shadows. And then for the sake of actually kind of silhouetting this, I'm going to expand your, your skinny bit here. That'll help us just silhouette this foreground. I actually think uh, this line is maybe a little too high based on the, the perspective of your foreground. I feel like it's just a bit too high. And the sky is flattening out a little bit. I'd like to see a little bit more form in there. I don't want to go too far, obviously, but um, a lot of it's actually kind of concentrating on that lighting again, thinking about really simple, um, simple shapes and modeling those forms and making sure you've got clear indications of shadows and lights on the top. So actually, I really like the, the colors you're using here. Um, it's just concentrating on those values again and making sure that uh, you kind of unify things into, into those big shapes. Uh, again, just like what we're doing in the first week, um, it's very, very easy to get a little bit off track uh, as you start to use more colors and to, to concentrate so much on the color palette you're using and forget about those value structures and making sure those are really, really solid. So that's probably about as far as I'll take this, but um, you can start to see that it's it's getting a bit more clear, um, particularly when you switch to grayscale. Uh, these values are starting to hold together a bit more. Um, they're starting to unify into some, some larger shapes um, rather than feeling kind of disjointed and not part of the same whole. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. All right. All right, these look cool. Um, yeah, I'm liking the liking the variety. The uh, the inner glows are working quite well. Um, yeah, I think I think this is working really well. My my personal favorite is sort of this top one because it's got kind of a nice nice variety of unusual colors. Um, Cause I think, uh, I think some of these other ones feel a bit more sort of expected for lack of a better word. Uh, whereas there's something nice about this kind of warm glowing kind of golden colors that you've got here. Uh, I'd almost like to see this one pushed a bit further. 
And this is actually another case where um, you've got kind of almost fall foliage going on in here. So it's the sort of perfect opportunity to introduce a few more reds in there. Um, I think you could get away with um, some more red tones in here. And then I'd be careful about getting your, your snow too gray. I think it's just a little too gray. I'd like to see some more color in there. I'd like to see some some blues in there. Because even though, yeah, it's, it's muted, uh, I want to see some more um, illumination from that sky. Uh, even though we can't see much of it, um, I feel like we want to see a bit more than uh, you've got now. And that'll make these these warm colors pop even more and uh, increase the intensity of that. Wonder about the saturation on this sort of tree trunk thing. I feel like it's a little too intense. Uh, the other thing is, is when you've got a focal point like this, uh, you want to be careful about other edges that are kind of trying to draw attention. So this is a really strong dark to light edge. And it doesn't need to be particularly that intense. Um, you can definitely have kind of dark to mid-tone maybe, um, but does it really need to be dark to light? Probably not. Um, you could probably get away with it being a little bit more um, a little more subtle there. Yeah, I actually think the, the yellow is working really nice. Um, it is, again, a little bit unexpected. It's, it's fairly intense. Um, but I think it works pretty well. Uh, it's just kind of balance it out with some of the, the nice blue tones in here, uh, some of the other nice fall foliage. So making sure you've got some more red tones in there. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with, uh, with, I think, what you're doing there. The other thing is, I think, uh, if you were to take something like this to finish, uh, do make sure the structure of the perspective is really strong. So I feel like. Um, I'm not exactly sure where you want to put your horizon line, but I think maybe maybe a touch below this line up here. So you actually would, I would probably want to see this kind of curving up a bit um, and just getting a slight glimpse of this grass kind of going over the side of it. I feel like that's, that's a little thing of, I think, the mood uh, and storytelling of that will be a little stronger if you are looking up at it. Gives it a little bit more grandeur, uh, more sense of like awe and interest in looking up at it. And I like introducing these these more saturated blues throughout here. Uh, I think it plays off all the nice warmth that you've got and uh, makes it all just a bit more intense. So, yeah, uh, I think the other ones are fairly successful. Um, the bottom one also works pretty well. Um, I'm not as crazy about this one. Uh, I think it's just a little, a little too dull in color overall, and I'd want to see either something else kind of happening. The colors are just sort of, yeah, it's it's green grass and kind of a dullish blue sky. Uh, there's nothing like kind of crazy happening there. Whereas I feel this is this is an interesting color palette. Uh, there's some fun stuff going on there, and. Uh, I think it's just a bit more interesting than this kind of night scene that you've got here. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this one. I think it works pretty well. Um, but I just, I guess I'm more drawn to the, the interesting color palette you've got here. 
Um, it sort of goes to what I was saying at the beginning here of, of those multiple notes uh, in that it's a more interesting color palette because it's got different colors working against one another. Um, it's got some really nice warm colors. It's got some really nice cool colors. And uh, I think all that stuff is working together uh, to, uh, to communicate an overall good message. So I think that one's probably my favorite. Um, I think would be a good one for, uh, for you to potentially take to finish. So yeah, looking good. All right, you're looking good. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think a number of these could could work pretty well. Um, hmm. Hmm. Just thinking a little bit. Um, you can never go wrong with a nice sunset image. Uh, they're always solid. Uh, the thing I would say about this is do be careful about illuminating things um, as if they're being illuminated from the side or rimlet. I would actually encourage a little bit less uh, illumination of these forms and a little bit more concentration on those silhouettes. I think you'll have a stronger sense of this um, sunset if you actually take out most of the illumination that you've got on this stuff. Instead, just kind of focus on those silhouettes because uh, very, very little of these forms are going to be illuminated if they're backlit by a sunset. You have to have, uh, to sort of have this side illumination on things, uh, you have to have a really wide angle shot and right now, you haven't really set up one like that. Uh, it, it all kind of comes down to this scale of things and how the perspective works. And so to have those side illuminations, you kind of would have to take this shot and then expand it out, you know, yay big. And then the stuff over here is probably going to be illuminated on the side. Um, so while keeping the same perspective, um, and all this same stuff going on, just drastically expanding it. Uh, but where you've got where things are fairly tight in there, uh, you're not going to have quite as much side illumination uh, as I think you're, as I think you're starting to imply here. So actually, I want to, I would want to see more of a focus on on nice silhouettes, um, and actually take out a lot of the a lot of the contrast. Sunsets are kind of particular in that to get them to really work as well as they can, uh, it requires a fair bit of subtlety in most of the painting uh, so that that sunset can read uh, as strongly as you want it to. You can get away with actually quite a lot of low contrast areas that will read as relatively high contrast. Um, even though they're even though they're very subtle. It's all about kind of a hierarchy of contrast. If you want a sunset in your image, you basically have to tone down all of your other contrasts uh, so that that sunset actually works correctly. Um, because the, the tendency is to make other things contrasty, because that's what we want to do. Um, but if we do that, uh, we kind of lose the effect of the sunset itself. Yeah, it's just kind of a, a case of clarifying things. And all that stuff works way better when you start to shift it to grayscale. Uh, you start to see that uh, see that happening. Um, I think for something like this, uh, I think this also works pretty well. Um, but I want to want to see uh, the distance implied more strongly. Uh, I actually think you need to go you need to go more low contrast. Um, if you want to get the scale that I think you're trying to get with these images. 
because uh, you want to be doing these things in, in much tighter value ranges. Uh, when you start to paint mountains and stuff like that, you've really, really got to tone down those value contrasts. Especially when you've got all this atmosphere and stuff like that happening. Uh, you're going to get some really, really low contrast um, forms in here. And after you've gone kind of really muted with everything, then you can kind of pick out a few areas that you think should be a little bit darker. Um, so for instance, your focal point here, maybe you can get ever so slightly darker in a couple spots. Let that uh, pop a bit more than the rest. Let most of it sort of fade into obscurity there. I think it just it holds together a bit better and starts to get the scale. Because I think part of my problem with these is, is they work in general overall, but they're not quite communicating um, the, the sense of kind of epic scale that you're, you're trying to imply here. You're trying to imply pretty big landscapes, but these still feel kind of small. And a lot of that is sort of this atmospheric perspective and the different levels of contrast that you're you're getting at here um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense um, as far as pushing things back and and encouraging that sense of scale yeah i think these are working are working pretty well overall um, uh, one note on this one in the bottom right, uh, I'm less fond of it just because there's too much warm. Uh, there's way, way, way too much warm, which sort of makes it feel too oppressively kind of brown. Um, when you're dealing with desert landscapes like this, it's really important that you get enough cool colors uh, and grays in your shadows so that it doesn't just feel brown. Uh, you need to have these these cool colors in your shadows and then some nice warm bounce light going on and uh, yeah you need you need that variety um, otherwise it just gets to be really oppressive um, and uh, there's a little, sort of like dullness almost to it um, you can't do too brown of a painting um, brown is not a not a good thing for paintings. Um, I don't particularly know why that is, but it just feels kind of overwhelming. It's why they tend to look a little bit muddy, is that they just have so much warmth and not enough coolness. And so try to make sure you're bringing in enough uh, cool colors to counteract all that, all that brown that you've got going on. So just a note in general on that sort of color palette. I think that's why that one wasn't working quite as strongly as some of the other ones. All right. All right. These are looking cool. Um, I think the, the trouble with these uh, is that it's not your colors. I actually think your colors are working pretty well. But your values, I am not crazy about. I think uh, in pursuit of nice colors, uh, you lost that sense of strong values uh, you've had before. Um, so uh, I think that's that's most of the the issue I take with these. Um, I think they're working pretty nicely. Uh, this one's as close as it gets to having sort of effective values, but even then, it's all over the place. And so I want to see, you know, going back to that first week of those really, really clear value shapes. Um, I want to see clear value to the sky. 
I want to see nice, simple values for these clouds. I see you break them down into those, those simple, simple value shapes. To be careful with too much overly saturated green, um, it's something else you'll find is that too much really saturated green feels really sickly and overwhelming for us. Uh, and it's important to balance out some desaturated tones when you do have that much saturation, particularly if you're trying to imply a light source. Um, you'll find that uh, if you do use if you use too much saturation everywhere, uh, it's just a little too overwhelming for us, and we need we need to balance it out with um, some less saturated tones. careful with too much saturation everywhere. Uh, it actually kind of loses the effectiveness of, of really saturated colors. Yeah, you can start to see that uh, the values are starting to come together a bit more. Uh, it's just a bit of simplification and uh, boiling things down. Because, um, for instance, this one that's so red doesn't feel like this is glowing red, um, even though you've got some red on the trees here, just because when you switch it to values, you can start to see that this is actually kind of mid-tone dark, and it just kind of all fades in. Uh, you're trying to do the glow with purely saturation, and that can work occasionally, but it typically only works if you're really tight with your values. Um, if this was all incredibly tight value ranges, um, you could almost get away with um, some of that, where, yeah, it's not actually that different in value. It's mostly just a saturation thing, uh, but it's incredibly difficult sort of color palette to get and just requires tons and tons of subtlety everywhere else. But you're typically better off trying to get intensity and glow and stuff like that by, by handling it with values more so than with um, saturation differences. So typically, if you want something to really glow red, um, you're going to need to, again, make everything more muted. It's all about those hierarchies of, OK, so if you want this thing to be super bright and you want it to seem really bright, then you need to tone everything else down. We can't have actual light bulbs in our scenes, so we have to make everything really intense. Kind of like if you took a flashlight outside during the middle of a sunny day. It doesn't seem that bright, um, but if you take it out in the middle of the night when it's really dark, uh, suddenly the flashlight is incredibly bright. Um, it's all about kind of managing those uh, expectations and managing the the overall hierarchies of of what we've got. I uh, don't want to go too far with this uh, to belabor the point, but yeah, just thinking more about uh, more about the values because the colors are are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, they're actually kind of going in the right direction. You have some nice varieties here, um, and I like some of the complementary colors you're putting in there. Uh, I just want to see uh, some more return focus to uh, to making sure your values are in the right place. Looking good. Um, this sort of, uh, again, kind of goes back to what I was talking about uh, uh, since the beginning here of 
making sure you're not just doing kind of a one note thing, uh, making sure you've got some other stuff going on, making sure it's just not a one note song where uh, like, yeah, it's very clear what's happening here. So for instance, if you've got this really yellow scene, um, you know, maybe think about introducing some shadows in here, uh, throw some of this into a cast shadow and then maybe introduce some cool colors in there. Um, you know, what would happen if you've got a nice, some nice blues in there. There's nothing wrong with a uh, sort of mono, mono hue painting. Uh, I've certainly done plenty of them myself, um, but it has to be a, a very conscious choice and not sort of something you go to because that's the only thing you know how to do um, or the only thing that you think of when you're thinking of color palettes. Uh, it's important to realize that that is a, a very conscious choice that you want to, you know, this is this is how I want to handle this. I do want this thing to just be, you know, yellow. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <coughs> oh, talk this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Just dying over here. Um, so yeah, making sure that all very intentional. Um, whereas I think uh, it's kind of nice to see some more variety in there. Um, so I'm not I'm not really buying the lighting in this case because uh, I'm not really seeing the the cast shadow of this huge rock here. Uh, I want to see more of that. I'm also not getting a lot of storytelling in here, and that's something I'd like to see you try to push a bit more. Like, I don't really get what we're doing here. Um, like, yeah, you've got cool rock, and I like cool rocks as much as the next guy, but I want to see some sort of something being told here, uh, something about this place beyond there's a cool rock. Um, and that could be, it doesn't have to be dramatic and crazy. Uh, it can be as simple as, you know, maybe the story is that, you know, this rock is actually broken up a little bit and maybe the rest of this rock is actually just kind of sitting on the ground and has clearly broken away. Like that's as intense of a narrative as you actually need to get. Um, it can just kind of be like uh, an implication that something at some point has happened. Um, and that little something can be as simple as the rock broke at some point. Um, that's, that's as fascinating as it needs to be. Um, it can obviously be more than that if you want it to. Um, but and that, <clears throat> that on its own is still at least telling us some sort of narrative here. Um, there's some sort of action, there's some sort of history. Um, there's almost a bit of, uh, a bit of world building there. Uh, realizing that this is a, a changing environment in some way, um, it could be, you know, that simple. And suddenly, there's there's a bit of a story here. You know, at some point, this thing fell there. Uh, start to think about that and thinking about how that's going to be, how you're going to construct a narrative with this, because uh, you're starting to imply a bit of mood here, um, but uh, you're gonna you're gonna get a lot more of that once you once you have some uh, some more narrative thought put into these. Um, cause honestly, this one in the upper right is kind of the only one to get a strong mood out of, uh, the other ones don't really tell me a lot of, of emotion to them. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, all right. You're looking cool. Um, yeah. Um, this one obviously works quite well. Um, and I like some of the subtlety you're getting here. Like I like this little spot over here. I like your secondary kind of focal point there. I think this works great. There's a lot of really tight value work in here. And I'm, I like what I'm seeing in there. Uh, it's a nice sort of uh, counterbalance to what's happening over here, which also is a great main focal point. Because obviously, you know where to look, but it also kind of gives you another place that you kind of want to go explore. 
kind of want to keep going up in this um, uh, river uh, to see more of that. Um, and I like that. I like um, I like having some focal points that you kind of want to explore and look in things. Uh, it kind of goes to what I was mentioning before about micro compositions, how even this little spot here is interesting. Uh, same goes for this. You know, I want to kind of look around this corner uh, and see more of this kind of nice glowing bounce light here. This is interesting on its own. And you kind of want areas in your piece uh, that are like that, um, that are telling you different, uh, different narratives. Um, <clears throat> this piece, I think, is working a little bit less well, which is why, probably why I'll focus on it a bit. Um, I have a feeling it has to do with some of the um, intensity of the kind of pink purple tones here. Um, I wonder if it's just that you need some more some more blues in here. The purples might just be a little overwhelming. Again, it, it kind of has to do with that uh, oversaturation of things where you sort of can't handle images that are so saturated everywhere. Uh, we need some areas that allow us to kind of rest a little bit and um, not have quite as so much stimulation in our eyes. It could also be that I want to see some more mixing of the, the oranges and the purples and kind of mixing those into kind of a nice gray tone. Sometimes the reds can get too red. Contrasted against these really saturated purples, because you've got some really saturated, rich reds uh, right next to some really dark, saturated, rich purples, um, which is a lot for us to to look at. Um, so I kind of want to see maybe a bit more more of that. Maybe maybe a little bit more of what you were doing in the other one with um, kind of moving the light around a bit more. Uh, have some other areas for us to kind of latch onto because these light areas are working working fairly well as, as well. I kind of want to see some some stuff brought into the foreground, um, maybe some a little bit more focus brought to the foreground. Yeah, I just think it it needed a little bit more balance for for all of those purples. Um, some more muted blues in here. Because within this color palette, a muted blue um, is is actually going to look fairly gray, uh, which is kind of what I want to see in here. Something to take some of the sharpness off all the uh, all the saturation going on in here. I also wonder if maybe you've got a little bit more range with some of these oranges, um, where you could go a bit more intense with some of them. That might be kind of nice to see.
So yeah, um, enough on that one. Um, but hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, overall, I think I think you're doing great. Uh, I love the stuff that's happening here. Um, I think with just a few tweaks, this one could work could work fairly well. A lot of nice stuff happening there. Uh, it just takes a little bit of little bit of tweaking to get there. So yeah, really nice stuff. Right. Looking good. Um, yeah, these look great. Um, I think the, the current most successful one is this top left one, just because I think it's it's reading like you want it to read uh, right away without any tweaking. Um, I think the sunset ones here, because uh, they both have they both have suns in them. Uh, aren't as strong as I think they should be, just because I think the lighting has gotten off a little bit. Uh, you've kind of gotten away from some of the silhouette stuff we talked about, and uh, too much um, too much lighting going on. Uh, believe it or not, uh, I think reducing some of the contrast there so that the sun does does pop a bit more um, important. It's just a little value thing here. Uh, it'd be nice to see the mountain more clearly differentiated from the sky. What I'm seeing here, I think the sky just got a little too dark. Doesn't read quite like sky and then mountains. You do want that darker. You're kind of doing in the rest of them, but I don't think it worked quite as well there. Already starting to get more of that sense of light um, than I think you had in there. Uh, maybe actually a bit more light um, hitting some of this background stuff. Get away with some contrast back here. I'm going to describe some of the forms. And then keep this foreground pretty subtle. Um, yeah. Something like that. Um, same goes for this. Uh, I think you just need a little more subtlety in there. And then probably also uh, some more cool colors. Again, this sort of suffers from the problem of too much intense red, where it starts to feel a little, little muddy just because of that. Um, I want to see some more gray tones brought in there uh, to balance that out, uh, especially in the shadows. Uh, too much red in shadows can look really, really muddy. Most of the time, muddy paintings come from uh, incorrect color temperatures. And your color temperatures here are just sort of warm on warm, uh, which feels kind of oppressive um, in their intensity, uh, I think is the, is the thing you're struggling with there. I see those nice, cool colors brought in. Most of the time, with a with a painting this red, you can get away with that by just adding in some more gray tones. Usually, as much cool as you need in shadows. And I think your color of the water here just got too green. Uh, you can obviously play it up a bit, but you want to be careful you're not going too far overboard that it just feels like like a different image. Yeah, that's starting to feel feel a little bit better to me. Um, so really thinking about those those cool tones in your shadows, making sure you're getting those uh, correct, 
and making sure that even if the the lighting might not be the most important thing that we're talking about this week, uh, it's still it's still important to get that that sense of lighting, um, even as we're focusing on different um, uh, uh, different emotions. So yeah, uh, looking good. Um, yeah. Right. So cool. Um, definitely some good, good stuff going on here. Um, I think, I think these are for some reason flattening out a bit more than your usual stuff, uh, does. I think, uh, they feel a little too repetitious right now. Um, it's kind of that problem of similarly sized things uh, that we've talked about. And especially since this is so, this is so flat, um, my, my gut reaction for this that I think would fix some of the compositional problems here and some of the issues that I'm having with uh, that repetitious nature of these things is actually to, to tilt this towards us. Um, and get some more intense perspective going on in here. Obviously that is a little bit more hard work for you. Um, I think this is, this is gonna solve some of your problems. Usually don't try to change things as drastically as this, but I think this is a case where um, to really communicate what I'm trying to say here, I've gotta show you the, the advantage to really pushing your perspective like this and how much more depth you're going to start to get in there uh, just by changing that that one factor and then making sure that these uh, these different flows of the waterfall uh, have a nice variety to them so i think they're getting a little too gray uh, again it's so common uh, when you start doing warm uh, to to underestimate the the importance of cool colors um, really will uh, help a whole lot. Trying to get a little bit more perspective in there, a little bit more depth. And you can start to see how, um, just as a thumbnail, it feels like there's more depth in there. Uh, I feel like these are just kind of flattening out a bit too much. And I know that's not super the focus uh, of these things, but I think you're doing decently well with communicating the different uh, narratives here. Like I like the forms that you're getting here and this kind of nice muted uh, sort of oppressive color palette. Uh, with these nice kind of sickly colors uh, mixed in with these nice kind of saturated purples and greens. Uh, I like some of the stuff happening there. But I think at this point, it's, a, it's an issue of making sure that these, these forms uh, and overall composition uh, are a little bit stronger. Um, it's also worth thinking about of making sure there's a nice variety to your, your color tones. Because right now you've sort of got uh, an overall brown here. Don't forget to think about you know what this stuff is. Uh, you know, is there is there a mix of different grasses, of shrubs, of dirt? Uh, you know, what kind of stuff is happening here? Because you can do all that and still maintain this color palette uh, just within tiny variations of hue, uh, saturation, all that sort of stuff, where you can uh, you can keep up the same color palette and still have that all in there. Yeah, I uh, don't want to go too far with it, but uh, something to think about. 
uh, as you're working on this stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry to look at the question. Uh, sorry, there's been a little bit more chat than usual and have not been paying enough attention to it. Um, for for V there, um, does RCAM3 go over drawing? Uh, do we learn how to draw environments uh, as well as just painting? Uh, for me, I always find that drawing and painting are sort of overlapping disciplines. Uh, I find that it's best to learn both of them at the same time. Um, and so for our camp three, we kind of do that. Uh, we do cover drawing. We certainly break things down into simple shapes, uh, learn how to draw and paint trees. Um, but I find them to be very overlapping things. Uh, and it's something you should focus on both of them at the same time. Uh, I find it can kind of screw people up if they focus too much on drawing or too much on painting and not enough on doing both of them at the same time. Uh, there shouldn't be a time that you're ever painting that you're not also drawing. So, yeah. Um, right. Good. Yeah, I really like the... Um, I really like your color palettes here. These are working really well. Um, they have a very, very good sense of some different colors here, and they're very interesting color palettes. Um, like, for instance, this is a great example of some of the stuff I've been talking about, of having some really saturated colors, but also just going like pure gray over here, of uh, just way more grayed out tones that balance out um, all this nice, juicy, uh, orange saturated colors. Um, you can get away with the saturated stuff if you make sure that you have enough desaturated stuff. And then some of these other ones are nice. Nice playing up of of some different color tones going on, um, and uh, yeah, I think they're I think they're overall working pretty well. Um, uh, I'd say that compositionally they're not quite as interesting as I think they could be. Um, they feel very simplified, uh, and I want to see you kind of try to communicate some more. Um, some more of the mood and emotion through straight up um, value shapes. Because uh, sort of this top right one is the only one with really kind of striking um, shapes, uh, whereas the other ones are kind of flattening out a little bit in terms of their, in terms of their overall shapes. Like, yeah, you've got, you've got a bit going on with this one, but even that, I think it sort of flattens out as far as environments go. Um, so making sure that you've, even as you're doing these sort of shape exercises, you're also thinking about, okay, we're going to just be painting a landscape here. And so there's going to be, it need to be um, some sense of depth of overlapping objects of atmospheric perspective of, of um, a linear perspective of drawing of stuff like that. Uh, so that you've got all these principles in there. You know, you bring some of this foreground stuff, even more foreground. Um, you overlap some of the background elements so that it reads as well as you want it to. Um, yeah, starting to think about not just, not just flat shapes in terms of storytelling, but in terms of doing it with the tools uh, that we use for painting landscapes. Um, that makes sense. Also encouraging, you know, maybe some really, really distant stuff, super, super faded out here. Um, yeah. Um, that would be my overall critique here, because I think you're you're nailing the color palettes, and I kind of want to see you try to do that stuff, but push the sense of just straight up environment painting, and how that's going to work for you. Because um, I think you're I think you're fully capable of doing it, uh, but I want to see you kind of push that before you start taking any of these to finish. Is try to think about also just painting an interesting landscape. Like the color palettes are here great, 
um, but they're not quite feeling like a cohesive environment. Whereas if you just took a little bit of extra time and maybe you know painted some extra forms in here, you know, implied some some mountains in there, uh, some different stuff going on, uh, maybe that's all you would even need uh, to make this feel like a cohesive environment rather than just kind of a nice color palette. Because these feel like really nice uh, color palette block-ins, but they don't feel like uh, cohesive total uh, environments, uh, which is kind of the direction I think uh, would be good to uh, would be good to push. Um, and to answer the question, does the drawing versus painting comment apply to environment design only or uh, character creation as well? Um, there's obviously a little bit more focus on straight drawing when it comes to character work, just because the drawing is even more important. Uh, there's a few things you can slack off on, like proportions in uh, environment drawing that you cannot slack off on in character drawing. So there's, there's a slight bit more focus. Um, but I find that people who do character work could probably benefit from trying to paint a little bit more. And people who do environment work should probably focus on drawing a little bit more than they tend to do. Um, but I do find it still the case that uh, both of the disciplines should be learned sort of simultaneously. Uh, so yeah, these are looking, these are looking really good. Um, you're definitely on the right track. Uh, I just want to see a little bit more uh, emphasis pushed towards making these nice cohesive environments uh, and I don't think it's going to take much for you to do uh, but I think you can uh, you can get there all right these look cool um, I really like uh, the color palette of this one I'm a sucker for this uh, I think this is working great um, there's a nice there's a nice subtlety to it and I think that works works really well um, there's a nice subtle lighting going on. Um, I think, uh, the colors are nice. There's so many nice forms and cools going on. Um, for something like this, um, I would want to see sort of more layers. Uh, you're going to find as you take this to finish that actually all of these are a little too simplified. Uh, and you're going to want some more layers of depth going on as you finish these. So for instance, this foreground is sort of all one layer. Um, and I would want to see maybe, you know, a second layer back here, um, another layer going back even further. And then, you know, as these mountains go back here, uh, you don't want just kind of a mountain shape and that's it. Uh, you want to also have some layers there where you've got some even more distant stuff going on as well as some stuff that's a little bit closer to us. So thinking about sort of that light, dark, light, dark um, banding that I've talked about, I believe, where things sort of uh, increase the amount of depth they have just by overlapping those lights and dark shapes uh, again and again as they recede to the background. Um, so think about adding in some more layers here um, to, uh, to push your sense of depth. And same goes for your other compositions that I think this is working great. I think this is a great start to something. Um, but I want to see, you know, rather than this just be on its own, I want to see it kind of repeated back here another time, but a little bit more faded out so that maybe we have a clearer idea of what's happening there. Um, and you know maybe maybe even a second time there, and then rather than just go straight from mountain to uh, field uh, snow here, maybe have another couple other hills here, and then once we get back to this here, um, yeah that works that works fine. But I almost want to see you know another even more distant layer back in here. Thinking about that dark to light, dark to light, dark to light, uh, and making sure you've got enough uh, sort of secondary interest in there and alternate forms to, to model uh, as we take these to finish. 
because I think these are working well, but they're sort of working well as kind of that one note thing where, you know, yeah, this is, this is good, this is strong. I almost want to see, you know, another ledge here. It can be, it can be in shadow and it can be very subtle, uh, but almost a repetition of some of the forms that you're doing there uh, in, the, in the foreground. Hopefully that makes sense. These feel like fine thumbnails, but as far as sketches go, uh, you want a little bit more complexity and a little bit more layering uh, so that they don't flatten out, I think, quite as much as you've got. But uh, yeah, overall looking nice. Your color palettes are great and uh, I think are heading in some interesting directions. And I really like the sense of light and values here. I think that's working great and could be could be a very successful uh, sort of start to a piece. Um, I think the composition works much better here. I don't find the composition overly interesting there, um, whereas the composition on these are quite strong, uh, but the lighting here and the color palette here is is very, very good. All right, it's cool. Um, yeah, I think this is this is a good start. Um, so there's there's a few things. Uh, I think you know you're trying to obviously make this bright. So this is a light source in the scene. Typically, anytime you've got a light source in the scene, it's going to be by far the brightest thing in that scene. Right now, it's kind of the brightest thing in the scene, but it's not overwhelmingly the brightest thing in the scene. And so for that reason, I think that um, you could push that a bit more. Um, this is going to be so lit up. Uh, don't be afraid to to really play up your lighting, make your lighting as interesting as you want it to. Um, to let that let that lighting kind of bleed out into other areas. Also, kind of gives you a nice kind of two lighting, uh, two color lighting setup here. And you've got this really nice kind of warm lighting uh, coming from within the scene. And then you're going to have a nice cool light from the, from the sky, from the moon up there. I think it's going to work pretty well. I might want to see that darkened down a little bit just to make that artificial light that's in the scene uh, stand out uh, as much as it can. I think that's kind of a style choice of, of kind of deciding your hierarchies of what's important about the scene. And if you're going to do a scene that kind of features this sort of sign in the middle of nowhere, uh, that's probably the point of the painting and is probably what you're going to want to emphasize. The point is not really the moonlight here. Uh, the point is this artificial light um, illuminating this dark scene here. Uh, so you can kind of subdue some of the other light um, that's entering this scene. Also keep in mind that there's going to be a lot of fade off on a light uh, like this in that keep in mind, okay, so it's coming from these light bulbs bouncing off there, bouncing on the ground, and then kind of bouncing up at everything. Uh, so everything's almost illuminated from below in this case. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of 
kind of like fading off of that light source. It's going to uh, diminish very, very rapidly. So there's going to be this really cool gradient effect, which you want to play up uh, where it's much brighter on the bottom uh, than it is on the top. It's going to diminish with the, with the rule of squares or something like that. I forget. Um, lighting fades off exponentially. So it's actually going to be a pretty rapid decline and a sort of a lighting effect that you want to exaggerate anytime you get a chance to play it up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give that sense of this really strong light source. Um, but is a very localized light source. It's almost play up like a reflection effect here. Just make that lighting read as strong as possible. And all this stuff works, uh, again, even as you go back to values. That's kind of your ultimate metric is, does it work when you're just looking at the values? And if the lighting works then, uh, then it's probably a good sign that your lightings are on your lighting values are all uh, working well together. Yeah, uh, overall looking good. Um, obviously, we want to see more um, variety. So you've got some more options to choose from uh, as we get to some finished work. But uh, I think you're heading in the right, uh, right direction. Um, these look cool. Um, all right, so I think that's everybody. All right, so yeah, overall, really nicely done. Um, you've got some good uh, different moods going on in here. Uh, you guys have come up with some really interesting, cool color palettes. And uh, seems like most people kind of need to do that that extra bit of variety of making sure that they're balancing in enough warms and cools, and they're not just doing that sort of one note song, uh, and making sure that all that stuff is balancing well as well as making sure that you don't forget about the stuff we talked about when we were talking about lighting and making sure that lighting reads uh, no matter what. Um, that even though our focus obviously was on emotion and narrative and stuff like that, uh, it's not a time that we want to neglect uh, the rest of the stuff we're doing. So always want to make sure our values work uh, flawlessly in everything we do. So yeah, uh, looking really good. And uh, we will do another critique uh, two weeks from now. And we will want to take a look at your first of your finished paintings. So take uh, whatever sketch that you like the best, that you think is best. Uh, if you struggle to decide, uh, you can go ahead and post it on the Discord or whatever. And uh, we can all take a look at that and help you decide what you think uh, might be the one you want to finish. And uh, if you want to take any of those sketches you've worked on and gotten paint overs on, you can of course post those as well and make sure that make sure they're they're all on the right track before you uh, before you dive into rendering. But as you as you take your pieces to finish, uh, try to take your time as much as possible. Um, make sure to really really go slow. Be patient. Uh, don't try to rush things. Don't try to be sloppy. Uh, nothing like that. In general, it's much better to really go slow, really take your time uh, than to be sloppy in any area. So if you find yourself getting stuck, uh, of course, do some studies. Uh, look at your piece in grayscale. Uh, odds are you're going to get off track as you take something to finish and are going to lose your sense of values and your sense of strong composition that you're probably going to have early on. So make sure you keep going back to that stage and make sure you don't lose that uh, as you take things to finish. Uh, there's a lot of lessons to be learned in finishing pieces, which is why I think it's a very important thing to do. Uh, it's super easy to get in the trap of doing nice sketches and literally never finishing pieces, uh, which is why a full 25% of this course is devoted to finishing paintings uh, because there's a lot of, a lot of importance to it and is, uh, is an essential element to painting good environments. So good work again, everyone. You guys are great. And uh, I'm excited to see what you come up with for your finals. And uh, I'll be taking a look if you want to post your works in progress uh, as you develop them. And uh, yeah, so good luck. And I will talk to you guys again in two weeks.